Many Japan-only Super Famicom titles never made their way to North America because of a variety of reasons. For most games of this kind, it came down to cultural differences between audiences, regional genre preferences, and gargantuan scripts that required immense time and effort. With Treasure Hunter G, though, it seems more likely that the title never made its way across the sea because it was released so late in the system's life cycle. Being released in May of 1996 meant that the next generation of consoles were already on their way, and few games were published on the SNES after that point. Regardless of its timing, though, Treasure Hunter G was a fantastic RPG that checked many of the boxes when it came to desired qualities for a game of its kind. Thankfully, the game is now accessible to English-speaking audiences by way of a translation patch that was first released in 2002. Treasure Hunter G takes place in a fantasy world where two brothers, Red and Blue, travel the world. Their father, Brown G, is often away on grandiose treasure hunting expeditions, forcing both brothers to feel empty and neglected. Red is something of a macho personality, whereas his brother Blue lacks self-confidence and suffers from depression. Along their journey, they also find Rain, a quiet girl with a mysterious past. Accompanying her is Ponga, a monkey with an attitude. Along the way, the adventurers have to deal with the creatively named Dark Lord and his minions. The characters each have their own defining aspects that set them apart from the rest. Red is the most physical intensive fighter with high attack and defense. Blue is another good melee fighter that can make use of a teleportation ability. Rain is the party's main healer, and she gets some offensive magic as well. Ponga functions much like a wizard, and he can learn all the attack magic in the game. Combat in Treasure Hunter G takes place on a grid. Each cell on the battlefield is a shaded color, each of which uniquely impacts the circumstances of combat. For instance, yellow squares make your special abilities require twice as many resources to execute as blue squares do, whereas red squares require twice as many resources as the yellow squares. In other words, positioning has a huge impact on resource management, and where the characters are standing is extremely important. This requires strategic decisions to be made by the player, but I think the game actually does a pretty good job of making sure it isn't too unfair. This is because many of the items expand your resource points, otherwise known as ACT. Also, each of the characters possess a range of attacks, and those that are long range can allow them to avoid having to stand on the costly squares. Unlike many other titles of this type, your own party members can actually inflict damage upon the others, so you really have to keep this in mind as you play. In Treasure Hunter G, you gain experience points after every successful hit in combat, and characters level up each time they accumulate 100 points. Many of the battle mechanics are reminiscent of some of the strategy RPGs from this time. Expect combat to be much more similar to Vandal Hearts and Tactics Ogre than to Final Fantasy. When you play Treasure Hunter G, you'll immediately take notice of the amazing visuals. If you were to compare this game to some of the early RPGs on the system, like say Draken or the Seventh Saga, you will simply be blown away. Distinctly, the characters in Treasure Hunter G were built from 3D models instead of being drawn by hand. This decision made the characters look very different than any other RPG on the system, and it's really quite noticeable. The visuals in this one remind me a lot of the graphics you would find in Donkey Kong Country, and they definitely seem a bit ahead of their time. The game also features several incredible cutscenes that really develop the story. Some of these moments are actually incredible and really push the SNES to its limits. In some ways, Treasure Hunter G goes beyond even what Far East of Eden Zero did at times. It's almost like a prototype of full motion video, and you just have to see it to understand what I mean. The overworld map is also gorgeous, and probably the best looking one of any RPG on the system. I've never been one to think that graphics should be the most defining aspect of any RPG, but those in this game transcend almost every other game of its type on the system, and there's something to be said for that. The score in Treasure Hunter G was created by seven different composers. This was yet another unique facet of the game, as most titles from this time only had one or two people devoted to such a task. Overall, I like the soundtrack quite a bit. It isn't as strong or as infectious as Chrono Trigger or even Live Alive, but I thought it was pretty solid for a game not developed by Squaresoft. The songs feature a lot of simulated brass and harp instruments, and trumpets are heard in most of the tunes. This fact alone sets it apart from many other games. The actual technical quality of the songs might be the best on the entire system, but the tunes aren't as memorable. Regardless, with over 70 tracks, the soundtrack is huge, and there's lots of variety here. While Treasure Hunter G was published by Square, it was actually the first game made by a much smaller developer called Sting. 
When I first read this fact, I couldn't believe it, because for a first-time developer, this game actually seems like a work of art. It just seems tremendously polished, even compared to games developed by companies with years of history under their belts. It was the last Squaresoft title published on the Super Famicom, and very shortly before the RPG Titan declared that they would be working with Sony on their upcoming titles, rather than Nintendo. As such, the game represents the end of an incredible RPG era. If it had been released here, I think Treasure Hunter G would have been considered one of the top RPGs on the system. Standing on its own merits, it's a darn good game. I don't think it has quite the epic story you would find in games like Final Fantasy VI or Chrono Trigger, but it's still an upper echelon RPG on the system. On a casual playthrough, Treasure Hunter G will give you about 20 hours of fun. The combat was so creative and well designed, and the gameplay is the title's best feature, but the amazing graphics also stand out as well. RPG fans that love strategy elements will like this one more than those that don't. If you like this review and have played Treasure Hunter G, leave a comment below about the most memorable aspect of the game to you. If you like my videos, please subscribe to my channel and click the bell below to be alerted upon the addition of new ones. Also, please consider supporting my channel via YouTube's Join feature to receive member exclusives, such as advanced videos and complete video transcripts.